This supervolcano, just 390 miles from London, can devastate Europe. Is it showing signs of awakening? It's not far from Paris either. This is Lacher Sea, or Lach Lake. Lach is lake. In English, Lacher Sea is the uh, German name for it. They say it's a supervolcano. It's a crater lake, or more exactly, a caldera lake. Just like the video before this one where we showed Crater Lake. Well, that is the caldera filled in with water in a volcano in Oregon. This is the same type of a thing. It's a beautiful lake, low-lying hills. And you wouldn't think of the fact that it would be so dangerous when you're boating out there, which uh, a lot of Germans do during the summer for their vacation and their leisure beautiful times in beautiful in a beautiful uh, uh, location beautiful scenery you wouldn't think you're you were on top of a caldera so this is in uh, caldera lake in rhineland palatinate germany according to volcano discovery situated close to the cities of kobel mayen and andernach and it fills the volcano caldera in the Eiffel mountain range. It's 407 meters deep. The caldera in the Eiffel mountain range, the only caldera in Central Europe, is part of the area of the East Eiffel volcanic field. It's a field. The caldera of La Herse formed after the La Herse volcano erupted, not that long ago actually, 12,900 and 11,200 years ago. So that's pretty relative geological time-wise. The remaining crust collapsed into the empty magma chamber below only two or three days after the eruption with an estimated volcanic explosivity index value of six. This eruption was 250 times larger than the eruption that we had Mount St. Helens in 1980. Remains of this eruption can be found all over Europe and is often used for dating of sediments. The number of unique minerals like Hawan can be found in the region and quarries to mine the stone as a building material. The Lacra volcano is still considered to be an active volcano proven by seismic activity and heavy thermal anomalies under the lake. Carbon dioxide CO2 gas from the magma still bubbles up at the southeastern shores, the Moffats, and scientists believe that a new eruption can happen at any time, which today would be a disaster beyond all description. Now, we have here a few of the, the earthquakes that we've had in July. Saturday, July 20th, 0 0.5 magnitude, 10 kilometers depth. Uh, also the same day, July 20th, 0 0.4, 11 kilometers. The same day again, 0 0.45 kilometers. June 15, 0 0.8 magnitude, 9 kilometers depth. January 11th, 0 0.9 magnitude, 6 kilometers depth. And there's a listing of all recent earthquakes here. I'm not going to go into that. The Daily Mail writes, it's a super volcano and is 390 miles from London and is it about to erupt, suggesting that La Herse volcano is Western Germany's could erupt any time volcano and produced and also to produce a large eruption since uh, such as uh, a devastation but still moderate not super volcano Pliny an eruption that it had 11,900 years ago. Writers uh, having to do with this issue say it's, it has a more dark fantasy than anything else. There is no scientific background to assume that an eruption in the foreseeable future could be in the making in the area. But if we talk to some Germans, and I'm sure I'm going to have a lot of people from Germany commenting on this, they will definitely know a lot more than we can find out about this. Now, concerning the devastation of this, it can take the whole part, well, actually over half of the United Kingdom, 
as you can see here, most of France is covered, all the Alps, northern Italy, taking in Denmark, Poland, uh, part of Slovenia, part of the, uh, the Balkan states, as you can see there. And I would venture to say a lot more than this. So uh, it's obviously not good. Now, looking at the listing of volcanoes of Europe, it's not even in the listing, unfortunately. Obviously, it's not an all-inclusive uh, listing. So, every 10 to 12,000 years, this volcano in the heart of Europe, as we see in the middle of it, just explodes. And it's not any explosion. It's, let's kill everyone with, with billion tons of magma, boom, that would cover everything in ash from England and Denmark to North Italy, as we see from the map. Now, this supervolcano that can destroy everything. It's been 12,900 years since the last eruption. The supervolcano under Lachen Sea, the Calder Lake in the Eiffel Mountain of Germany, 15 miles from Kobenz and 30 miles from Bonn, the old capital of West Germany. Some scientists say that the volcano can go any time. From what we read from a volcano discovery, it can erupt any time. Although there are no official alerts, they're just watching for now. As we said, it has geothermal activity underneath. There's bubbling and the CO2 bubbling from uh, under the water. As we know, the lake is the, uh, uh, has the, is the caldera and there's a magma body right under that. Seismological activity started in 2010. The latest movements happening uh, recently with a series of seven earthquakes ranged from two to four and a half magnitude registered in the area. The lake's been bubbling since with carbon dioxide gas coming from the magma, which is under the lake's bed. So as we see, the caldera is underneath, is the actual, the, the bottom of the lake is the roof of the magma chamber. So it could be that this is what Europe needs to get out of the, I don't know, Euro crisis? <laughs> So, what would happen to the world and its weather if this deadly Mount Tambora and Yellowstone hyper-mega supervolcanic explosion has exploded all at the same time? We can imagine. So, um, according to what uh, La Hercie can do, it has a diameter of one and a half miles. As we said, it's in Rhineland Palatinate, Germany about 15 miles northwest of Kobetz, 37 miles or 23, 37 kilometers, 23 miles south of Bonn, closest to the town of Andernach, about five miles to the east on the River Rhine. It's in the Eiffel Mountain Range, part of the East Eiffel Volcanic Field. The East Eiffel Volcanic Field, it has a tremendous amount of tuff. Uh, I'll leave it, uh, you can see pictures of this in... Uh, Wikipedia, which I'm reading of, it's a region in the Eiffel Mountain in Germany that is defined to a large extent by its volcanic geological history. Characteristic of this volcanic field are the typical explosion crater, lakes, and, or Mars, and numerous other signs of volcanic activity, such as volcanic tufts. And it's within the Vulcan Eiffel. The uh, Lake was formed by the Plinian eruption about 12,900 years ago and the volcanic explosivity of six, the same scale as the Pinatumbo eruption of 1991. The lake is oval in shape, surrounded by high banks. The lava was quarried for millstones from the Roman period until the introduction of iron rollers for grinding corn. So uh, that's where they were getting all their stones for... Uh, uh, mill, milling their, their uh, wheat and their grains. On the western side, I don't know if you ever saw any millstones. Uh, we have a lot of them here in the, in the towns and in, uh, in the villages in Greece. They were using them up to uh, about uh, you know, 100 years ago. On the western side lies the Benedictine Monastery of Maria Lach Abbey, founded in 1093 by Henry II of Lach, House of Luxembourg. Now the eruption... Volcanism in Germany can be traced back for millions of years due to the collision between the African and the Eurasian plates, but it has been concentrated in bursts associated with the loading and unloading of ice 
during glacial advances and retreats. The initial blasts of La Hercie took place in late spring or early summer, flattened trees for up to four kilometers away. The magma opened a route to the surface, which erupted for about 10 hours, with the plume probably reaching heights of 35 kilometer height plume. Can you imagine? Activity continued for several weeks or months with pyroclastic currents which covered valleys up to 10 kilometers away with sticky tephra. Near the crater deposits are over, are over 50 meters, 50 meters and 150 feet, and even 5 kilometers away there are still 10 meters thick, the tephra. All plants and animals for a distance of about 60 kilometers to the northeast and 40 kilometers to the southeast must have been exterminated. An estimated 6 cubic kilometers, or 1.4 cubic miles, of magma erupted, producing around 16 cubic kilometers, or 3.8 cubic miles of tephra. This huge Plinian eruption thus had a volcanic explosivity index of 6. The tephra deposits from this eruption dammed the River Rhine, creating a 140 square kilometer, or 50 square mile lake, when the dam broke, an outburst flood swept downstream, leaving deposits as far away as Bonn. The fallout has been identified in the area of more than 300,000 square kilometers, stretching from central France to northern Italy, and from southern Sweden to Poland, making it an invaluable tool for chronological correlation of archaeological and paleo-environmental layers across the area. After a mass of the eruption. You can also see the Younger Dryas. The Younger Dryas, we'll see later, the wider effects of the eruption were limited, amounting to several years of cold summers and up to two decades of environmental disruption in Germany. But the lives of the local population, known as the Federmesser culture, was disrupted. The Federmesser Messer group is an archaeological umbrella term including the latter upper Paleologic, Paleolithic to Mesolithic cultures of the Northern European Plain. They date back to 14,000 to 12,800 years ago. It's closely related to the Chongarian culture, as both have been suggested. Uh, so the Fed Federmesser culture, about 14,000 years ago, up to 13,000, were disrupted before the eruption, they were a sparsely distributed people who subsisted by foraging and hunting using both spears and bows and arrows. According to archaeologist Felix Reed, after the eruption, the area most affected by the fallout, the Thuringian Basin, occupied by the Federmesser, appears to have been largely depopulated, whereas populations in southwest Germany and France increased. Two new cultures, the Brome of southern Scandinavia, and the Perstonian of Northeast Europe emerged, and these cultures had a lower level of toolmaking skills than the Federmesser, particularly the Brom, who appeared to have lost the bow and arrow technology. In Reed's review, his view, the decline was a result from the disruption caused by the Lacher Sea volcano. Now, what are the other uh, volcanoes in Germany? There's a whole list of them. The Bergberg, Bergberg, uh, it doesn't say when it last erupted. The Dupacher, Dupacher Weher last erupted about 7,000 years BC. The uh, Hohen Acht volcano, the Mons Nor, erupted about 10,000 years ago. The Hoher List, they don't say when it erupted. The Lahar Sea, as we said, about 10,930 BC about uh, 13,000 years ago, the West Eiffel Volcanic Field, 7,000 BC, the Hohenfringer, Fringen, the Hohenhewen, the Hohenkrachen, the Hohenstoffen, the Hohentwilg, the Magdeburg, sorry for my German, the Ellenbogen, the Führerberg, the Heidelstein, the Kreuzberg, the Millsberg, the Schwaben Himmel, the Wasserkumpf, the Hohurstkopf, and the Taufsten. Wow, I got through that. 
Now I'll have a cup, a strong cup of coffee. So uh, you can see there's a whole lot of, um, what were they? How many volcanoes were they in, in this? Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, over 21, over 22 volcanoes uh, in the whole of Germany. So this one here is considered to be a super volcano right smack in the middle of uh, Europe, as we can see. And when it explodes, it takes up the whole of uh, the mainland of Europe and uh, most of the United Kingdom. So I'll leave links below for you for that. And as we can see, it's uh, being active. And what happens, we'll have to keep an eye on it. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece and Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.